Hi, my name is Pat Smith, and I'd like to show you our touchscreen control for our Wayscale Blender. What you see here is our, our standard control and the new touchscreen. Um, the standard control uh, was the original controller for the Wayscale Blender when it, it was introduced in 1989. Since that time, we have uh, shipped over 37,000 of Wayscale Blenders with this control on it, and uh, it has obviously proven reliability. Uh, this is probably the most bulletproof controller that I have ever experienced in my life. But as technology has evolved, and with the availability of touchscreens, uh, we found that uh, navigation and controller setup is much easier with a touchscreen. So we're now offering the touchscreen uh, as an option. Um, but one feature of the, of the standard controller that had always been extremely popular was how easy it was to set up. Now, the one thing that the operator knows is the percentages of the ingredients within the blend. And so Steve McGuire developed a controller where all you had to do was put in those percentages on the face of the controller, and then that controller does all the math and uh, determines that you have a, a blend in a proper ratio. So that was as simple as for regrind, if you want 20%, you just set 20 on that uh, thumb wheel. If you have an additive, let's call that 2.5%. You would put 2.5% on that thumb wheel. And let's say there is a, a uh, fourth component, which is, uh, let's, let's call it color. And let's say that's a 4% color. And it's as simple as that. That's, uh, this blender then would be ready to operate. That was so popular that we now have tried to emulate that same setup routine uh, with a touchscreen format. So all I do is touch the regrind uh, entry pad, and uh, let's say our regrind is at 20%. Enter that, and we have 20%. We have an additive at 2.5%, 2.5, enter. And we have another additive at 4%, 4.0, enter. And now you're set up just as you were before in that same manner in which you had set up the previous controller, and now you're good to go. The touchscreen control is a computer with a Linux operating system. Linux is proven in industrial applications and provides the processing speed required for mathematical calculations that are critical to reliable Blender performance. The uh, enclosure of the uh, uh, controller is 7 inches by 9 inches and about 3 inches deep. Uh, the, the controller is connected to the Blender with a 4-conductor cable. This makes it uh, very easily remoted when the blender is in an inaccessible uh, location. Uh, the controller also has two ports on the side. This lower port is an Ethernet connection that uh, provides 100 megabit per second communication speed. And also up here we have the USB port. The USB port is multi-purpose. First of all, you can connect a USB printer to that port and uh, print out any uh, documentation that you require. And also, the USB port accommodates a memory stick so that you can upload or download uh, data as required. The touchscreen control also allows storage of 99 recipes, plus we have two-level password security. This is a close-up of the 5-inch color touchscreen. Uh, this touchscreen is a little different from most touchscreens that are available in the industry. Uh, most blenders are operated by PLCs, and a PLC touchscreen is actually, it treats the touchscreen as a remote device. So in communicating with that remote device, uh, you're going to trade off speed of response time. And uh, our touchscreen is actually the display of the computer itself so that response time is much faster than with a PLC. And you'll notice that as I navigate through the uh, various screens. But here with the layout of the screen, in the upper left-hand corner, we show the model that is currently being operated. Uh, this is a display of the accumulated weight totals that, uh, as the blender is processing materials, uh, we'll display that, uh, that weight as it accumulates as we build a batch. Um, here are the uh, percentage entry uh, screens for the materials as I previously described. Uh, down here we show the blender condition. In this case, the blender has stopped. We have a start-stop button. 
And up here in the upper right, we have a view key. Uh, I'll press that view key, and up comes uh, totals of material processed by the blender. This is a very handy screen if you want to track actual material consumption. Uh, you can use this screen and uh, create uh, material usage reports uh, for, any, for whatever period of time that you uh, require. Whether it's every shift, every day, every week, every month, you can go into the screen, document the materials that have been uh, processed by the blender, and then once you've done that, you hit the clear button, that clears all totals and begins to accumulate that again, and then you can access the, this screen at a later date to uh, retrieve those totals. And finally, in the upper right-hand corner, we have the Options key. That allows you access to the internal parameters of the blender. But really, setting of these percentages is really all you have to know to operate the blender. But in fact, um, there are many special capabilities that have been developed, and the touchscreen control makes it easy and intuitive to access these functions. I'm going to go into the program mode by entering the password. In this case, our password is five twos. Hit enter. The next screen offers you five intuitive selections for setting of the blender. We have parameters, special functions, manual operation, timed operation, and calibrate flow rate. Uh, let me actuate the first selection. Under parameters, parameters allow you access to blender adjustments that are commonly used. All Wayscale blenders operate according to certain internal parameters. Because customer requirements vary widely, we have made a wide range of parameters accessible through the touchscreen. First of all, we have control times. Timing of devices are at the heart of the blender operation, and this allows you to adjust these. A vibration control. Vibration is the biggest enemy of accuracy for any gravimetric blender, and by actuating this key, it allows you to go in and eliminate the effects, the effects of vibration, depending on your situation. This key is called weight limits. Uh, if you are running materials that are unusually low or high in density, this allows you to adjust for that. Um, up here we have the components key. Uh, dispense device operation uh, can be adjusted for each component. Um, we have regrind control. There are many different custom applications uh, for the handling of regrind, and this gives you access to those options. And finally, we have mixer control. This allows you to control the mixer to optimize the blend that you're, you are getting uh, from the blender itself. I will go back to my menu screen, and now I will, I will actuate special functions. Here we have seven keys that give you access uh, to different uh, modes of operation. First of all, you have setup. Setup allows you to specifically set the blender, uh, if it's a conventional blender, or if it's a totalizer, or a dispenser, or if you're using extrusion control, this allows you to set up that, uh, that capability. We have diagnostics key. If there are troubleshooting uh, uh, requires some diagnostics, this allows you to, to generate some information that we can help you with as far as troubleshooting any problems you may have. Uh, here's a print options key. Uh, for any of your documentation requirements, you can access your printer options here. This is our TCP IP configuration key. This allows you to set up any data network over the Ethernet network that we have uh, supplied. Uh, up here we have operating options. Uh, these options help you deal with extreme conditions such as inconsistent flowing materials or situations that call for extraordinary accuracy of critical components. Here's a special features button. This button would be used if you have a very specialized situation where a factory technician would be working with you to set up uh, very special parameters. And finally, we have our resets button. On a resets button, this allows you to change your password, uh, allows you to enter software updates. Uh, you can clear totals with this key, a number of resets available for the, uh, the Blender itself. We'll go back to our main menu. And the next key is manual operation. This allows you to operate any device on the blender. Um, the next key is timed operation. All devices are based on, on timing, and this allows you to adjust timing as required. 
Finally, we have calibrate flow rate. Uh, when changing materials, this allows you to calibrate the flow rate of the new material so the blender can be dead on from its very first batch. And there you have the touchscreen controller. There are hundreds of custom programs that are available in software, and the McGuire touchscreen controller provides you with intuitive access and easy navigation so that you can get the most out of your blender with minimal effort. And finally, this touchscreen is backed by a five-year warranty. You'll find competitive units uh, are limited to a two-year warranty, but this touchscreen, like all of McGuire equipment, is backed by our industry-leading five-year warranty. Thanks for watching.